joining the live stream of International Symposium Clim Climate Action and Disaster Risk Reduction will be starting shortly. You can find speakers' bio data in the updated program posted on the website. Also, the panelists have kindly prepared slides with case studies in advance. Some of them even made a film, which you will find on the website as well. After the conclusion of the live streaming, we will be conducting an online questionnaire survey. The QR code on the screen can be scanned with your PC and smartphone, and you will jump to questionnaire page. We would appreciate your cooperation. QR code will be displayed once again after the program. Now we are, will be starting the program shortly. Please wait for a few more moments. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We would like to start the International Symposium Climate Action and Disaster Risk Reduction, Enhancing Synergies Between Climate Actions, Disaster Risk Reduction, and the SDGs for Achieving a Climate Resilient World, jointly organized by the Ministry of the Environment of Japan, Cabinet Office Japan, United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction. Thank you for joining us. Let me introduce myself. I'll be serving as your MC today. I am Osamu Mizuno, Principal Fellow at the Institute for Global Environmental S Strategies, or IGES. IGEF. The program will last for 90 minutes. I hope you will stay tuned until the end of the program. On behalf of the organizers, Ms. Keiko Segawa, Deputy Director General for Global Environment Bureau of the Ministry of the Environment, will make opening remarks. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for participating in the International Symposium Climate Action and Disaster Risk Relations. The recently, the world has seen climate-related disasters increasingly intensify, and Japan has also seen typhoons and heavy rainfalls causing significant damages. It is said that climate change will further raise disaster risks going forward, thus adapt to climate change through DRR measures is urgently required. It is against this backdrop we organized this symposium to discuss issues, in particular the direction toward enhancement of synergies between climate action in DRR and SDGs, jointly organized by the Ministry of the Environment, Cabinet Office, and UNDRR. In this program, we are pleased to have Ms. Mami Mizutori, Special Representative of the UNSG and Head of UNDRR, to as a keynote speaker to talk about the direction of international discussion about climate change in DRR. Then we will have a panel discussion with overseas and Japanese experts to explore how we can enhance synergies between three global agendas, namely the Paris Agreement, Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, and SDGs, focusing on challenges and directions pertaining to international efforts and Japan's role. Thank you for participation, members of the panel. Regarding the introduction of the panelists, during the panel discussion, facilitator uh, Dr. Takemoto, who is the visiting professor at the UNUASIS, and uh, we are going to have an open dialogue among Ms. Zutori, keynote speaker, and Mr. Takeda, Minister of State for Disaster Management, a minister in charge of building national resilience, and Mr. Koizumi, Minister of the Environment, to have an open dialogue after the panel discussion. Minister Koizumi and Minister Takeda had three meetings since uh, February this year and issued a joint message uh, entitled the Climate Action and uh, DRR. And this uh, discussion took place together with experts to see the direction of the uh, climate action and DRR uh, measures in Japan or strategies. So we are going to discuss based on this joint message to discuss what Japan can do to globally uh, promote synergies. 
and also we will keep COVID-19 in mind in our discussion. We are in the middle of a climate emergency. That is our recognition at the ministry. Therefore, climate change and DRR and also enhancing the synergies between the three agenda will be promoted through this discussion going forward. Thank you very much. Next, I would like to invite the Special Representative of the UN Secretary General for Disaster Risk Reduction and the head of UNDRR, Ms. Mami Mizutori, to talk about DRR under climate emergency global trend. She will give a keynote speech on this topic. Without further ado, Ms. Mizutori, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Hello from Geneva. I'd like to thank the Minister of Environment and also the Cabinet Office and UNDRR. As you know, this is, a, is supposed to be under the joint offices of these three parties, and I'm very happy to be able to speak keynote speech. We're now faced with a very difficult situation, and as the last resort, we have begun these online conferences. But as a result, while I'm, while I'm in Geneva, I'm able to come across many people taking part from within outside Japan. I'm very appreciative of the opportunity to share with you this very, uh, very important message in a such broad manner. Now, as you know, the emergency was lifted, the state of emergency was lifted in Japan and in Geneva. We're now moving on to a new norm. However, in the case of uh, Americas and also in the rest of the world, the coronavirus continues to be wreak havoc in Japan and Europe must come across a very severe impact in terms of economy and society going forward. So against that backdrop, and while the situation is quite challenging, we must remember that we are under another emergency. That is that we are under a climate emergency. We must not forget that we are under that emergency. This is a global phenomenon, and, and in Japan we have seen very important lives being lost as a result of uh, torrential rain and storms. So bearing in mind that situation, it would not be an exaggeration to say that ERR, without considering climate risk, would be ineffective. There is a somber fact that the majority of global natural disasters are due to extreme weather. Over the past 20 years, when we take a look at the larger disasters, 90% of those disasters have been related to climate change. And also, if we don't achieve, if we are not, if we don't achieve DRR, and we do not stop disaster, then we will not be able to deliver the so-called SDG goals, which we have committed to 2030. So SDG goal number one: eradication of poverty. There is a fact that around the world, 26 million people have been forced to uh, their poverty because of the disaster. SDG goal number eight, economic growth. Economic loss as a result of disasters are expected to reach $520 billion per annum. Both of these are due to World Bank statistics. So as a result, in 2015, the uh, correction. Recognition on the need to achieve Paris Agreement, which we all agreed upon in 2015, and Center Framework for DRR, and also SDG Agenda 2030. Altogether, simultaneously, is now discussed as a common sense in various international forums. Attention at Ad attention ad adaptation in climate change policy is increasing. Without, without mitigation, mankind cannot overcome climate and emergency brought on by climate change. And we will be faced with a very serious situation indeed. Unfortunately, these, the pace of progress in mitigation is not enough to avoid this very severe emergency. So as a result, there is now growing attention on adaptation in climate change policy. In other words, while we are promoting mitigation, the evidence of climate change has become very evident. So therefore, that means that the adaptation policy will be gaining greater importance. Under Secretary General, Mr. Guterres, last September, called upon the Climate Action Summit, and adaptation was greatly stressed. And also, World Bank 
Green Climate Fund for assistance to developing countries is not expanding. And as a matter of fact, in terms of adaptation policy and also in terms of uh, DRR, we, are, we have shared many policy objectives. So therefore, there's a growing demand to secure consistency and synergy in legislation, policy, planning, and implementation in both of these fronts. But in reality, the situation is quite different. In many countries, adaptation are being taken on by the Ministry of Environment. And also, the OR is being under the responsible of ministries that are responsible for disasters. So therefore, when it comes to legislation, policy, and also budget allocation, there is no uh, consistency. There is a silos. Unfortunately, that is the trend in the international community. However, we will not be able to respond to climate change. And that type of uh, thinking is now spreading here in Japan. And I believe that is the backdrop of hosting this international symposium today, and also the fact that we have a joint message being issued by Minister Koizumi and Minister Takeda. Also, around the world, there have been various examples whereby integration has been successful. For example, let's take the example of South Pacific Island nations. Because of the geographical conditions, they are exposed to various uh, disaster risks. But then they have uh, shortages in terms of human and financial resources, and their administrative capacity is lacking. In order to overcome such situation as the last result, as the last resort, they have integrated climate change policy and DRR under a single organization, and they're trying to achieve uh, SDGs under that situation. This began in Tonga in 2009, and since 2017, this has become a basic policy covering the whole of this region. Also, in the United Kingdom, the flood control is seen as the most uh, serious natural disaster. So they now have an act called the Flood and Water Management Act in order to integrate climate change and DRR. The gist of this act is to clarify roles and responsibilities in flood policy among different actors. And also on top of that, they offered options related to highly permeable pavement and water discharge based on nature, such as rooftop greening. Furthermore, in Norway, they have a regulation related to integration of sea level rise and high tide disaster with regard to regional development. In Norway, for both existing and new structures in coastal cities, they have decided to ass assess risks related to future sea level rise and high tide. And also, they're gauging the potential impact on lives of citizens. That, that has become an obligation. On top of that, with regard to existing structures and facilities, the results of these surveys are to be reflected in their policy. And also, with regard to new structures, whether the said land is suited to development uh, will be determined based on the results of such uh, activities. The one final example at UNDRR and UNFCC and UNDP, we have been pursuing a project of integration for climate change adaptation and disaster risk reduction targeting 40 vulnerable nations. This is trying to make compatible climate change adaptation DRR. And that know-how will be delivered to the receiving countries, and this project is, is to be implemented. In the face of climate change that which affects the world, the reality is that we are not responding with the same level of urgency as we have with COVID-19. That might be because compared to the impact of, of pandemic, the impact of climate change tend to progress, taking greater time. That is considered to be one of the factors. However, climate change is a reality. Extreme weather is increasing in terms of frequency and severity. Unless we pursue preparations and act with a sense of urgency, I think COVID-19 has taught the world that all aspects of life will no longer be viable. So climate change policy, DRR policy, and SDG can only be achieved simultaneously here in Japan. It is important that we create such a momentum to realize these goals altogether. And later on, 
I'm sure that two ministers will talk about the expectation of uh, the International Community on Japan, which is very great. They will talk about this during the Open Dialogue session. And also, I'm looking forward to getting a great deal of knowledge and wisdom from the experts that are taking part in the symposium as they engage in panel discussion. I'm looking forward to learning from their examples. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Ms. Mizutori. Now we would like to move on to a panel discussion, challenges, way forward, and Japan's potential contribution to international cooperation to enhance synergies between three global agendas, Paris Agreement, Sendai Framework, and SDGs. For this session, we are joined by a stellar panel of experts from Japan and overseas with diverse expertise. And it is Dr. Takemoto Kazehiko who will lead the discussion among this truly global panel. Um, Dr. Uh, Takemoto Kazehiko uh, is a visiting professor of the United Nations University Institute for the Advanced Study of Sustainability and project professor of the University of Tokyo. And the panelists have prepared slides in advance with case studies. They are posted on the website, so please refer to them. Now I would like to hand over to Dr. Takemoto. Hi, arigato. Thank you for that kind introduction. Thank you for your kind introduction. My name is Takan Takemoto. I'm the visiting professor at the U University. I look forward to your kind cooperation. Now, from this point onwards, we would like to engage in the panel discussion. First, I would like to introduce the panelists who will be joining us on the stage. The first, Director of uh, Adaptation Division, Acting Director, Intergovernmental Inter Inter Support and Collective Progress Division of UNFCC, and Dr. Yusuf Nasef from uh, Kiribati, uh, Dr. Mwenweni Keaki, who is the, with the Office of the President, and also Dr. Nakakita, who is with the Kyoto University of Kyoto, and from JICA. We have with us Senior Vice President, Mr. Amano, and also from E3G, we have Ms. Kate Lovick taking part in the program. And also from the Minister of, uh, Ministry of, of Environment, we have with us uh, Ms. Uh, Segawa, the Deputy Director General, who spoke at the beginning. And also from the Cabinet Office, we have with us Assistant Vice Minister for Disaster Management, Mr. Murate. So we have a total of seven panelists who will be joining us in this panel discussion. As was introduced by by Ms. Mistori, who is the special representative of uh, UN uh, and head of, head of UNDR. She talked about uh, the three global agenda, so SDG, uh, Center Framework, and also Paris Agreement. We, we want to have a, we want to introduce, uh, she talked about the international discussion that are trying to integrate these three examples. And also she gave com concrete examples. And also as the UN institution, she talked about how the institution is trying to appropriately respond to this situation. She shared with us her resolve. So based on the keynote speech given by Ms. Mizutori, we hope that we'll be able to base our, base our panel discussion and exchange views. So with regard to the discussion, I have already asked two guiding questions beforehand. Uh, the first, guiding question A. Which experiences, systems, or information are useful in preparing for disasters intensified by climate change? That is the first guiding question. And the second guiding question, what can Japan contribute for the world to benefit from the synergies between the three global agendas, namely Paris Agreement, Sendai Framework, and SDGs? What can Japan contribute for the world to benefit from the synergies between the three global agendas? What contributions are there? On that point, we hope that we'll be able to exchange views later on. And then, without further ado, let's begin with the first guiding principle, which experiences, systems, or information are useful in preparing for disasters intensified by climate change. Let's begin our discussion on this guiding question. I'd like to invite comments from the panelists. So first, from 
I would like to ask Dr. Nassif from UNFCCC to lead the floor. Dr. please. Thank you very much, and thank you to the organizers for uh, allowing me to contribute to this. Uh, and um, um, since uh, the presentation I have is already on the web, perhaps I will uh, not be sharing it on the screen, but you can follow it there. And um, I'll try as much as possible to, um, to sort of open the door for, for interactivity in, in this discussion. Um, as as what it was introduced, I carry two different hats at UNFCC. One is um, I supervise all work relating to adaptation, but I'm also the acting director for the department that deals with uh, what we call intergovernmental support, meaning um, the whole teams that, um, that support the negotiating process, the UNFCC, as well as the team that uh, works on um, the global stock take and the global goal, the two 1.5 um, degree uh, goal. And so um, I have quite a, a broad coverage these days. And uh, it's interesting how one can see um, parallels with, uh, with the COVID-19 situation we're going in. It, it's impossible to address any of the, of the topics that we are approaching without acknowledging uh, the crisis and, and the lessons learned from, uh, from this uh, crisis, which is one of the experiences that are useful because we're going through it um, right now and, and we're learning things even regardless of the climate change uh, um, link. So um, I think uh, just to start with, 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 with why the experience we're going through now with COVID-19 is useful in imparting messages and how to build on these um, messages. I mean, we've, we've uh, um, the, 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 the biggest message and lesson that I take from what we're going through now is the importance of cooperation internationally and thematic cooperation and solidarity. Second message that came out clear is the importance of early action. Um, and, and this is really an important principle, both in climate change and in, in DRR, in disaster risk reduction. Third uh, is, is the importance of prevention versus reaction and the need for integration of approaches. And Tori San mentioned the silo effect that we're going to not only at the national level, but in fact, international level. And UNDRR is, is a very close organization to UNFCCC. We have a lot of engagement countries, um, as we will hear from Kiribati, have undertaken the JNAP, which is a planning process that involves both um, disaster reduction as well as climate change adaptation. But I think we are really quite far from achieving uh, full integration among the agendas, including the SDGs as well. So a lot more work has to be done at, um, at international level. Now, um, just moving um, forward on, on, on the topic of the presentation, if you're following um, uh, my, my presentation as well, um, in dealing with, with climate change, we, we, we're sort of um, dealing with two different phases of climate action. So when the Paris Agreement was adopted, um, there was a certain context whereby um, the Conference of the Parties, the COP, the supreme decision-making body on climate change internationally, had set up a timeline. Uh, it was a pretty long-term one. So as of 2020, we're supposed to go into a ramped up finance and um, revised or new NDCs would come in. Then 2023, you'd have the first global stock take and the global stock take is this report card that, uh, that the international community gives itself as to how well it is performing towards, um, towards climate uh, objectives. Uh, but Nassif, then- Mr. Nassif, could you wrap up? Sorry. Quickly, could you wrap up? Um, yes, and, and, and so, um, I mean, the, 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 the lessons here, again, on your, on your question, um, is that even though we had planned on a long-term um, engagement of, uh, of climate action, we got from the IPC a stark reminder in 2018 from the IPC 1.5 report that we have no time, basically, that by 20, 
2030, we have to have got our act together in climate action. And even though we had a Paris Agreement timeline, we have to move a bit faster. So you are asking for, for experiences. We have experiences from science, from observed impacts, from assessments that uh, impart on us the necessity to go farther. We have experience from COVID-19 for integration, for holism, for early action, for preemption. And uh, let me leave it at that and come back later if I'm given a chance. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Nasef. Now let me invite the uh, next speaker, Mr. Wen Wen uh, Keaki, uh, Mr. Uh, Wen uh, Wen Keaki, please. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, 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 to uh, go straight to the, to the question, and I think uh, in the case of Kiribati and hopefully in the case of SITS, uh, other uh, small island developing states, I think what has been useful in preparing for the disasters intensified by climate change is, uh, is, is, is these kind of things, exchanging knowledge and experiences on cases uh, and strategic plans set forth and lesson learned that we could adopt and, and uh, contextualize uh, uh, nationally. And, and as our previous panelists have mentioned, uh, we have done a joint NAP, uh, which is on climate change uh, and disaster risk management. And, and there's always a room for improvements. Uh, we believe that uh, this uh, JNAP will, will help us uh, in achieving our SDGs, and, uh, but still we, we have uh, rooms uh, uh, for improvements. And, and yes, and the other thing is, I want to, 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 to clarify more on exchanging knowledge and experiences because uh, I think this is, this is where for our JNAP is, 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 is developed uh, uh, through, through the support from our international partners and, and regional partners uh, uh, in, in, in telling us and, and assisting us that, that in the case of Kiribati and, and maybe to other SIPs that uh, uh, disaster is, is pre pretty much climate change to, to us and, and almost uh, disaster, climate related disasters account for almost 50 to 70 percentage of the, the total disaster uh, events have occurred. And so uh, integrating these, uh, these two phenomena, I think it's, it's, it's the best way to, uh, to minimize and to the effort and the, the, the and and the the the, the, the financing uh, for for adapting and re reducing uh, risks uh, from disasters. Mm. Thanks. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Wen Wen Keaki, for your uh, intervention. Now, uh, so now I would like to call upon Professor Nakakita of Kyoto University Disaster Prevention Research Institute. Professor Nakakita, please. Thank you for the kind introduction. First of all, I would like to express my appreciation for giving me this valuable opportunity to speak as a member of the panel. Thank you, organizers. Now, from my part, I would like to mainly talk about climate change adaptation. And based on that, I would like to briefly talk. In a nutshell, I would say, as the keynote speaker and also Mr. Nasef said, adaptation itself has to be started immediately for no regret adaptation. We have to do it now, immediately. In Japan, too, for the past years, we have been suffering from very severe disasters. And the Japanese public themselves are suffering from more severe and more frequent disasters. And disasters are happening in unprecedented areas. And the public are thinking 
increasingly that this is caused by global warming. Against this backdrop, what is important for future adaptation is that we have to base our policies based on scientific climate change uh, prediction. Extreme weathers and also extreme uh, rains and such hazards and risks, how are they going to evolve uh, based on we have to make the judgment based on scientific prediction, and that prediction has to be uh, incorporated into strategies for adaptation, which has to be implemented right now. That is becoming increasingly important. Already, the disasters which are happening already, scientifically, we can say some of them would not happen uh, without climate change. And the extent to which climate change have affected the occurrence of these disasters have become uh, clearer. And uh, with regard to flood control, for ex instance, MLIT, the Ministry of Land, has to get the plan, review the plan corresponding to the climate change impact uh, assessment. And the ministry is about to uh, finish this uh, formulation process of the new plan. So that is where we stand now. Other related agencies and ministries are in the same situation. And uh, science-based researchers like us uh, in the DDR, DRR, we are working with relevant ministries, and we are sharing expertise and know-how. And we started such discussion already. But in any case, sorry, I am getting lengthy. So in a nutshell, my point is as follows. The time needed for adaptation, the climate change is uh, uh, even f occurring faster compared to the time needed for climate. Thank you. Next from JICA, we'd like to invite Mr. Amano, uh, the Senior Vice President of JICA, to take. Mr. Amano, the floor is yours. Thank you for giving me, giving me and inviting me. And uh, regarding your question, uh, although climate-related disaster will be severe due to climate change, the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction is even more applicable to reduce disaster risk. We have to accelerate our activity for DRR aligned with Sendai framework in consideration of climate change. In Japan's history, we have tackled various kinds of disasters, such as flood, drought, sediment disaster, earthquake, tsunami, and volcano eruption. While Japanese government shared a certain amount of budget to disaster risk reduction for the last seven decades. As a result, Japan has significantly reduced disaster risk so far. For instance, flood caused fatalities were drastically reduced. Therefore, JICA has fully supported the Sendai framework that clearly states the pr primary responsibility of each state and the importance of ex-ante investment in disaster risk reduction. In particular, I would emphasize that among four priority actions of the framework, priority action one, understanding disaster risk is critical to confront disasters intensified by climate change. That is our basis to conduct any activities for DRR. JICA is supporting that all of stakeholders, including residents, academia, and government officials share disaster risk information affected by climate change. Also, regardless of climate change, JICA continues supporting various DRR projects. For instance, JICA is supporting the National Institution for Disaster Risk Reduction, which would play a key role to proceed DRR activities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Amano, for your uh, intervention and response. Now, uh, let me invite the uh, next speaker, Ms. Kato Levick from uh, E3G. Kato, you have the floor, please. Hello, and I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to participate in this event. Um, one key area for addressing climate risk, which also provides synergy across all three agendas, is the area of finance. So disaster reduction and resilience to climate change must be integrated into financial decision making if we are to build a resilient society and then to build back better after disaster. 
I'll speak a little bit about European policy. In 2018, the European Commission launched a Sustainable Finance Action Plan, which had three goals. The first goal was to reorient capital flows towards sustainable investment in order to achieve sustainable and inclusive growth. The second was to manage financial risks stemming from climate change, environmental degradation and social issues. And the third was to foster transparency and long-termism in financial and economic activity. Although these were important goals, most of the specific actions in the plan did not focus on resilience or physical risks from climate change. In 2019, UNDRR, together with E3G, published a report that recommended 11 areas to explore for the next phase of European sustainable finance report reforms in order to integrate disaster risk reduction and climate resilience. Many of the suggestions we made were based around the availability of data for financial decision making and around the creation of frameworks for financial decisions to be made. So, for example, the availability of adaptation strategies for a country or an area are very important so that the right kind of investment decisions can be made, which build resilience into new infrastructure. Since then, we're now in 2020, of course, the world has seen financial and economic impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, and suddenly resilience seems a lot more important. The European Union has framed its economic recovery in terms of a European Green Deal, and the whole world understands the importance of risk resilience to society and to finance. This hopefully will be expressed in Europe's new renewed sustainable finance strategy, which is now being created for launch in late 2020. And I hope that Japan will be able to work with Europe and with other leading countries to make the integration of climate risk into finance an important agenda at international level. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Uh, Levick, uh, for your insight for uh, the uh, remarks. Uh, so we have received the response from all the panelists with regard to the first guiding question. So. I hope that I'll be able to wrap up toward the end. But with regard to vulnerable, highly vulnerable regions, providing DRR, technological cooperation, scientific knowledge must be delivered. And also, there is need for financing in order to translate these policies into action. On these points, we received very important insight from our panelists. So let me now go on to the next guiding question, the second round of discussion. The second guiding question is as follows. What can Japan contribute to the world to benefit from the synergies between the three global agendas? So contribution, we would like to talk about the contribution from Japan. So I would like to invite the Japanese panelists to take the floor first on this guiding question. So let me start with Dr. Nakakita of University of Kyoto. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Earlier, as I said, scientific uh, future prediction is extremely important. In Japan, uh, climatologists and uh, uh, disaster-related experts have to work together in order to come up with uh, risk hazards based on disaster prediction. So we have to make a hazard mapping. We have been doing that. So I think we can contribute uh, to the world in this area. Climatologists and the DRR experts, uh, the cooperation between the two groups is important. But at the same time, for that many years, uh, there are implementing agencies of the government. We have been working together. So we have to tie up three groups of uh, uh, stakeholders like this. The, we have to uh, use and practice the uh, knowledge and wisdoms that we get through research activities, and we can share that with the world. That's a part of Japan's contribution. In addition to that, we have been suffering from natural disasters in a long history. Therefore, we have a wisdom uh, from uh, ancestors and predecessors. And uh, we have been working uh, in harmony with nature. Although there could be natural disasters, we have been surviving the natural disasters. I think we can learn from this experience uh, that can be done by Japanese people and that can be shared with the people in the world. That is also important. Next from JICA, Mr. Amano, please. Yes. 
to work through three global agenda, I would emphasize the importance of human security. As you know, human security is a concept to build a world where everyone can live in dignity, free from fear and want, through the protection of and empowerment of all individuals. The Japanese government adopted human security as one of its basic policy under its Overseas Development Assistance Charter since 2003. Therefore, JICA has given high priority to the support for vulnerable people. Many developing countries are not sufficiently prepared for even present disaster risk. Poor people tend to live in populated urban area that is more vulnerable to disaster risk increased by climate change. JICA will promote investment in disaster risk reduction for the urban area with predicting climate change impact and strengthen resilience of urban infrastructure. In order to promote excellent investment in DRR, JICA has supported many countries in developing their national and local DRR strategies. It is necessary to align national plans for climate change adaptation with national plans for DRR to uh, avoid unwise investment. In spite of these efforts, Disaster risk persists and could be even more increased by climate change. Once severe disaster occurs, it would be highly important to ensure that disaster risk reduction measures are proper, properly materialized in recovery and reconstruction. That is also well corresponding to climate change impact. Therefore, JICA has supported Build Back Better in developing countries such as Philippines, Nepal, and Indonesia after the respective mega disasters. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Amano. Now, uh, uh, Next, from the Japanese government, I would like to invite two panelists. I would like to ask first from the Minister of Environment, Deputy Director General Ms. Segawa, to take the floor. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. The uh, SDGs and uh, climate action and DRR, they are all key policies of the Ministry of the Environment with a view to realizing the global agendas. In my view, as Professor Nakakita mentioned, I believe that our role is to implement the concrete emissions reduction actions and projects in the case of uh, climate change and actually implement these projects and bring the entire society on board. And uh, we shall also share our actions taken on the ground broadly with the people at home and abroad. I think this is a role to be played by the Ministry of the Environment. More specifically, I would like to give you some examples in relation to the, these agendas. First, about the Paris Agreement. In an effort to reduce emissions in line with the goals of the agreement, we are trying to transition to a distributed energy system with the renewables as key energy source, and this is actually useful in times of disaster, according to our experience. During a typhoon last year, Chiba had a widespread low power failure. However, areas uh, with distributed the renewable generation system had a power running and they served as DRR basis as well. As we discussed under Sendai framework, we are promoting DRR that leverages ecosystem, namely eco DRR. Natural resources can be protected through this and Hokkaido's uh, Kushiro uh, wetland has a water retention function that can regulate downstream discharge and that have potential to contribute to lowering disaster risks. At the Ministry of Environment, we assess climate change impact in various fields, including DRR, and publish the results in our report every five years, and we are currently putting together the latest edition due to come up this year. Regarding international cooperation, the ministry launched Asia-Pacific Adaptation Information Platform last year. Through this platform, we provide information such as climate change risks and good pra adaptation practice and support uh, human resource development. Lastly, SDGs. Uh, both climate action and DRR include in SDGs uh, goal. Professor 
Nakakita and uh, Mr. Amano talked about their activities at JICA and others. And the target year for achieving SDGs is 2030, but I believe the effort that we are making, including JICA and others, uh, will definitely lead into actions in the post-SDG era. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, from the Cabinet Office, I would like to invite Mr. Murate, Assistant Vice Minister. Thank you very much. My name is Murate, responsible for disaster management. I'm the Assistant Vice Minister for the, at the Cabinet Office. At uh, Typhoon Faxai in September 2019, as was mentioned earlier, due to the storm, there was a prolonged blackout. And also at uh, the Typhoon Hajibis in October 2019, 90, more than 90 people lost their lives as a result of the heavy rainfall. So the death and the, those missing as a result of storm and flood damage for the past two years have recorded three digits for two years in a row. So here in Japan, we're beginning to see intensification of uh, se uh, severity and the frequency of disasters in our country. In order to respond to such disasters, there is a cabinet decision related to three-year plan for DRR and building na na national resilience for three-year period of 2018. And seven trillion yen will be invested for this three-year plan. And both hard measures and soft measures are being taken. Over the long history of Japan, we've experienced various disasters, as was mentioned by Professor Nakakita, not only heavy rainfall and typhoon, and we have overcome them, and we have technology and know-how for both hard and soft, where, uh, soft aspects. So therefore, leveraging such DR technology, we hope they will be able to contribute to the DRR development around the world. Last year, through public and private partnership, an organization called JIPAD was launched. This has uh, involved more than 190 companies and organizations in, in the fields of manufacturing, construction, research and telecommunications. And through public-private uh, DRR seminar, they are communicating our technology and know-how related to DRR to various countries around the world. We would like to incorporate climate change aspect into these initiatives so that we'll be able to contribute to the enhanced DRR capacity of the various countries. Such initiatives really respond to the requirements under the Sendai framework, such as the need to develop understanding with regard to DRR risk, uh, DRR, uh, strengthening DRR governance, and also promoting DRR investment, as well as enhancing initial response. And also the need to build back better. Here in Japan, we've been hosting continuously conferences such as the Asia Conference on Climate Reduction, so uh, that we are able to lead the international discussion. Asian Disaster Reduction Center that is uh, holding such Asian Conference on Climate Reduction, Disaster Reduction, and also EPIPLAT is now having coordination. And we would like to realize synergy with, with regard to climate action, DR, through such initiatives. That is all. Thank you very much for your input. Now, from this point onwards, we would like to invite comments from our three panelists from abroad. I would like to seek your comments with regard to the comments made so far. So let's go on to Dr. Nasef from UNFCCC. The floor is yours, sir. Nasef, you have the floor, please. Um, thank you very much. Once again, I'll be very short. Um, and from what we've heard and from what we know already, Japan has made great strides and accumulated a lot of experience in um, disaster recovery that takes account of um, the comprehensive setting. And so, the one thing that I feel um, the world would benefit from, um, from uh, Japan's interventions, is the sharing of all these experiences. Uh, I mean, we talk a lot about building back better. When we put it in the context of a changed future, a new normal, if you will, then it's, 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 it's sort of building forward rather than back, if, um, if, if that captures a bit the notion that we must always prepare for a different future, not recover as to what we were before. And Japan has a lot to offer there. Through the international process, I think um, um, we have three distinct uh, areas where I think an input from Japan would be um, very useful. One is the national adaptation plans. Um, and, and through Japan's experience and support to that, um, to that effort, um, I think we can benefit from learning how to interface the national adaptation planning process with uh, DRR, with achievement of the SDGs. Then we have a whole 
um, work stream on loss and damage, which, which relates a lot to what happens when adaptation was not enough and how to then address these losses and damages arising from climatic uh, and other hazards. And um, there's also in the UNFCC a massive repository of knowledge, the Nairobi Work Program, and um, we would love to share the experiences of Japan, both in, uh, in, in, in recovery, but also in how the policy has managed to integrate um, the three agendas that we talked about and within a futuristic perspective, knowing um, that we have to prepare for a different set of circumstances. So basically it's sharing experience and supporting processes in ways that can uh, incentivize the bridging uh, across these silos. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you very much for your uh, comment. Now let me invite the uh, next speaker, uh, Mr. Wang Wenikeaki from uh, Kiribati. Please. Okay, thank you. Uh, greetings again from Kiribati. Uh, in regards to the question, in regards to the question and uh, what can Japan contribute to the world to benefit uh, 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 regards to the topic? Uh, <clears throat> I think I don't have anything to say to what Japan can contribute to the world in, in regard of the topic. I just have to express our gratitude, Kiribati and other small island states as Japan, for what as Japan has contributed. Uh, one for creating a platform uh, to share knowledge and experience on climate change adaptation in Asia Pacific. Uh, I think through this platform, AP Plat, uh, countries in Asia Pacific uh, are going to benefit by getting scientific knowledge and data such as remote sensing technology, uh, Japan's case studies on the R. I have learned that toolkits and capacity building programs will also be provided in this uh, platform. Uh, so it is a great opportunity to utilize and learn from these cases and to be able to modify it if necessary to our island context. Uh, uh, Kiribati is not yet a member or not yet joined this platform, but therefore this serves as a request to the consent sector uh, 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 to further assist us uh, or advise us on what are the, the requirements and or how to join this platform. This is a very important uh, platform. And another is through the JICA here in Kiribati, uh, it's support and uh, in organizing mangrove replanting uh, every year and and the ISME uh, for uh, further study on mangrove and its benefit uh, for climate change uh, uh, adaptation and uh, uh, to, to to minimize the erosion and and it's uh, contributing to the to the disaster risk and as well as uh, to the medication for the carbon sequestration and those other things that Japan have done uh, we're so very grateful for those thanks good thank you very much for your comment now uh, let me uh, ask uh, the Kato Levick uh, to take the floor please. Um, hello, everybody, and thank you to the um, speakers for their very helpful remarks. So um, it's clear to me that Japan is taking a leadership role internationally um, in disaster risk reduction, but also in addressing the global economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. And within that leadership role, Japan has the opportunity to take forward particular actions which will support the integration of resilience into financial rules which will support Paris, the Sendai, and the SDGs. One of the international actions that could be taken by Japan is to be a champion for climate risk disclosure by companies and financial firms, in line with the recommendations of the Task Force for Climate-Related Financial Disclosure. Japan has made great steps already towards making this a required norm. I would urge Japan to work together with the UK, which is also making TCFD adoption a key goal of the UK's presidency of the COP26 climate negotiations. Another area in which Japan can take a leading role internationally is through having a robust science-based approach to ESG investing, including the use of investment taxonomies. Guiding capital flows towards sustainable investments can help to meet the goals, again, of the Paris Agreement, the Sendai Framework, and the SDGs. And Japan has great opportunities to provide leadership in this area. Thank you. Hey, 
どうもありがとうございました。Exchange of views on guiding question number B. So, as far as the wrap up is concerned, first, echo, there, there was mention of echo DRR, and also there was mention of、uh, scientific knowledge. So, Japanese know how and technology. We should make sure that we deliver this to the international community in a, way, in a manner which can be used very easily. I believe this was, a sham,、uh, this was one shared recognition. And the second point the strong knowledge that Japan has with regard to climate change and the technology thereof through techno technological cooperation, then we'll be able to contribute toward the delivery of SDG. I believe that is one potential course that we'll be able to follow. So, we have、uh, two high officials from the Japanese government, from the Minister of Environment, as well as from the Cabinet Office, and they shared with us、uh, their views. Both government agencies are now working closely, and also they're now working closely with JICA as well. And also, they're close, closely coordinating and collaborating with the academic society in Japan. And the, they're trying to leverage both public and private sector financing. And I believe that sense of direction and course was probably shared today, in particular when it comes to small island developing states and also those、uh, impoverished nations. Cooperation to these countries and the need thereof was highlighted. And also, knowledge, exchange of knowledge was also shared, I believe. So, through such activities, we hope that going forward, we will be able to. Promote, they will be able to、uh, contribute rather to further international cooperation down the road. And also, last but not least, we hope that this type of discussion can be held going forward. Today should simply be a starting point. So, the members of the government and the stakeholders, we should all work together and consider the possibility of continuing with this type of discussion. And also, the three global agenda, the Paris Agreement. Paris the Paris Agreement on Climate Change and also the Center Framework and also SDGs. With, from those perspectives, we have to have synergy in order to deliver synergies between these three、uh, goals. It's important that we further promote cooperation among the various stakeholders and, and actors. And with that wish, we would like to close the panel discussion as time has come. So, with this, we'd like to close the panel discussion. I'd like to thank all our panelists for their contribution. So, this concludes the panel discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Takemoto sama, panelists no mina sama. Thank you very much, Dr. Takemoto and the members of the panel. With that, I would like to conclude the panel discussion. We are going to make preparations for the open dialogue, the next part of the program, which will start at 6 p.m. Please wait for a few more minutes. Thank you. <laughs>
ああそうですか。<音楽>はい、はい、いいですかそれではただいまより。We will now like to start open dialogue. The speakers are Mr. Ryota Takeda, Minister of State for Disaster Management and Minister in Charge of Building National Resilience, and Mr. Shinjiro Koizumi, Minister of the Environment Japan, and Ms. Mami Mizudori, Special Representative of the UNSG for Disaster Risk Reduction and Head of the UNDRR. I hand over to Minister Koizumi to proceed with the discussion. Minister Koizumi, please. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank Special Representative Ms. Mitsudori and also Minister Takeda. I look forward to your kind cooperation. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Mitsudori, where can I see you? Can I see Ms. Mitsudori's face? Ah, yes, I see you now. How are you, Ms. Mitsudori? Yes, thank you. I'm well. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Well, it is indeed a great honor to be able to issue a joint message with myself and uh, Minister Takeda. And along the way, we have received tremendous cooperation from Ms. Mizutori. We've been holding various study groups, and Ms. Mizutori has talked about the need for it bringing together climate change, DRR, and SDG, and also achieving Pair agreement and the center framework. She mentioned that all of these must be com compatible and achieved simultaneously. So I believe that this is one of the important points of the joint message that myself and Minister Takeda has laid out. Now, in a limited time, in this open dialogue, we would like to discuss this matter. And I would like to ask Mr. Minister Takeda to share, share his views about his thoughts behind this joint message. And also, I would also like to talk about my thoughts behind the joint message as well. That is what we hope to cover in this discussion. And also, I would like to invite Ms. Mizutori later on to share her inter international perspective, how she assesses and evaluates the joint message from the international perspective. So let me start with Minister Takeda. Minister Takeda. Before you talk about your thoughts behind the joint message, can we talk about some of the basic elements for our audience? So in hosting this international symposium, Climate Action Disaster Risk Reduction, several we weeks ago, as far as the Ministry of Environment is concerned, actually, for the first time, we mentioned that climate change is now climate emergency. We, uh, we gave a de declaration of climate emergency Last year, we had enormous uh, typhoon-related disasters. And also, as the Ministry, of Invi uh, Ministry responsible for heat stroke countermeasures, so therefore, the number of uh, people, uh, heat stroke patients that were carried to the emergency uh, rooms have been increasing in number. For the, so that being the case, we declare that we're now in the situation of climate emergency. And in the study groups uh, to compile this joint message, we have received various inputs from the experts. And in all policies, it's important that we incorporate uh, climate change. So therefore, climate change uh, and uh, DRR is indispensable. So our thought 
is to shift from restoring the status quo to adapt adaptive recovery. That's the message we want to share with you, Rest shifting from restoring the status quo to adaptive recovery. I would like to talk about my thoughts behind this adaptive recovery later on, but I'd like to invite Minister Takeda, responsible for natural disasters, to share with us his thoughts behind this message. So, Minister Takeda, over to you. Thank you very much, Takeda, here. From the past, in international conferences, I have laid out a consistent message. Recently, the we have been seen increased uh, intensified frequency and severity of extreme weather. The Japanese public must re change and renew its awareness of disasters. And I think that is the very important course of, of policy to be followed by Japan going forward. Now, with regard to this, there are a lot of different disaster-related countermeasures one could take. But the countermeasures based on our experience so far is that we focused on response after the disasters occur. That is the focus. Naturally, this is very important. The initial response is very important. What order do we follow? What sequence do we follow to in seeking rebuilding, visiting the sites of affected areas and so forth? That is important. But we have to really revisit the fundamentals and the basic aspects. Why is it that we have seen intensification of extreme weather here in Japan? As various uh, people point out, global warming is at the fundamental roots of this issue. It is an indispensable part. So therefore, not only disaster, DRR, but also we have to consider the global challenge of uh, global warming. And we have to combine these two as we, disc as we try to protect mankind from natural disasters going forward. So in issuing this message, what we want to communicate to all people is as follows. Mankind must be more humble when it comes to this type of international disasters on the globe, within the natural environment. We are allowed to live and exist in this natural environment. We must be more humble toward nature. If uh, mankind can become more humble, then I believe we'll, this will support and contribute to resolving this global warming issue. Also. Well, this while we have this overarching goal, the most important, the uh, the most uh, immediate is issue is that we're beginning to see guerrilla rainfall. Can these levees stand against such torrential rain? Can the levees in place really protect the lives of people? There are many regions uh, that have the sense of anxiety. That is a reality. So. So near the rivers, near the mountains, and near the oceans, depending on residential areas, uh, the countermeasures will vary from region to region. But the thing is, though, in, in one's nation, protecting lives and assets of the people, protecting the economy, do we have robust infrastructure in this in the nation? There are elements which are insufficient. There are shortfalls. Now, from 2018 toward 2020, Seven trillion yen investment uh, will be made to pursue a building national resilience program. And uh, this spans 160 different items. So therefore, water, uh, sewage, water supply, various uh, elements, uh, over 160 different items will be checked. So it's important that we follow up our experience so far. But at the same time, it's important that we create flex, we create resilient nation. And it's important that we take various measures toward the sand and also the government and the local communities. It's important that they take various measures. It's important that they take measures. But at the same time, each individual citizen must understand the following. The thing is that you have to be responsible for protecting your, your own valuable life. When disasters strike in order to protect your own life, what actions are necessary? And what when should such actions be taken? You have to think that on your own. And based on that, you have to consider how you can protect your neighbors, your families, and your friends. It's important that you secure, secure safety for all these people. It's important that you collaborate with many people so that mutual assistance is also important, too. But it's important that you take actions to protect yourself. So each individual person's awareness toward disasters, that needs to be, uh, I think the importance of such recognition needs to be uh, further uh, promoted. Of course, it would be desirable if no disasters strike. But then 
there's nothing that mankind can do. So, so it's important that we deal uh, adeptly uh, with the uh, disasters. It's important that we deal well uh, with these uh, uh, disasters. And also, as we experienced in the COVID-19, it's imp it seems that people, goods, facilities, and the government, there have been over concentration in Tokyo. So if to if there is a shortfall, if, if uh, the function of Tokyo were to go down, then everything will come down. So therefore, it's important that we decentralize the functions, we decentralize population throughout Japan. So it's important that we issue such a message, dealing skillfully with disasters and recovery. That is, and that is the education that we want to promote. So Ms. Mizutori and uh, Minister Koizumi, we hope that we have studied together with you up until now. But uh, this, I believe, is very important experience that we have been able to add. And we will continue to s sustainably revisit our uh, efforts. And that is the thought behind this message. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister Takeda. Going forward, the you said importance of dealing skillfully with disasters. I think that viewpoint has to be incorporated into our DRR measures. As the total Japan's policy, we are aiming for distributed society. Therefore, the uh, cross uh, ministerial uh, effort is important. Therefore, Minister Takeda, in charge of DRR, and myself, in charge of the uh, climate change. Therefore, uh, our views are incorporated into in our joint message, as described by Mr. Uh, Takeda very aptly. And now, for myself, this is the view and biggest points I incorporate into the joint message. After the disaster, simply restoring the status quo, not simple status quo recovery, but just uh, spending a lot of money to strengthen infrastructure, that is not the only thing we want to do. Rather, as Minister Takeda said, as is expressed in the word, uh, skillfully dealing with disasters. I think in various localities, we have a lot of accumulation of uh, wisdom, uh, utilization of ecosystem, and also wisdom coming from the long history of suffering from disasters. I think uh, this is important when it comes to adaptive uh, recovery. This is the key message, adaptive recovery. In Japan, we had a roaring state uh, period, and many people do like that period in our history. Looking around the uh, countries in Japan, Shingen Takeda, Kiyomasa Takeda, who promoted a flood control from which we can learn a lot, even uh, in our generation. Therefore, we have wisdom deep-rooted in the uh, each locality uh, to address uh, uh, disasters. We we have to skillfully deal with uh, typhoons and uh, floods and so forth, and uh, we can protect assets and lives of people. And this is the view incorporated into adapted recovery. Now, uh, in areas vulnerable to disasters, maybe we should choose not to live there, and we have to consider best use of the land, and uh, we should prevent and reduce uh, disaster risks, and the climate change uh, viewpoint, uh, adaptation in particular, have to be incorporated into all policy uh, measures. So adaptive recovery uh, should be shared among the different ministries in the government, and this is the, something we have to appeal to. Uh, the government organizations. Now, adaptive recovery should be promoted, Ms. Pistori, and also distribute to society, as was said by Minister Takeda. I want to invite comments from Ms. Pistori regarding our joint message. Uh, Minister Takeda, Minister Koizumi, thank you very much. First of all, I would like to express uh, my congratulatory message for the issuance of a joint message. This is a cross-ministerial uh, effort. It's easier said than done, and everybody knows that. Having said that, on the other hand, the public's uh, livelihood and lives have to be protected. They have to live in safe and secure ways, and that is the primary responsibility of the government. And therefore, the joint message coming from different ministries is very important as two ministers uh, 
mentioned earlier, what I felt through your remarks is as follows. First of all, Minister Koizumi said in the beginning, a climate crisis declaration that reflects the reality. The uh, UN Secretary General many times used climate uh, emergency or climate crisis because we are facing a crisis now and we are not uh, being a scaremonger. So that is to say, we have to take ownership of this uh, crisis. We have to be aware that we are living in a crisis. And against this backdrop, Minister Takeda, in charge of DRR, said that we have been focused on post-disaster responses. However, we have to be more proactive, and I agree with that. Compared to other countries in the world, Japan is uh, good uh, in terms of prevention and uh, ex ante investment of disasters. However, in other uh, UN agencies as well, we often focus on post-disaster reactions. However, that is too late because we can't uh, recover uh, lives lost and livelihood lost. Therefore, since the climate change impact will increase in the future, therefore, we have to look into the fundamentals. That is to say, we have to consider what is our risks, as Minister Takeda said, distributed type of society. Of course, not only within Japan, but also this has become a big challenge in the world because world population is being concentrated into cities and the urban development in many developing countries is uh, being done in disorderly way. As a result, slums in urban areas are uh, becoming so vulnerable. So as minister said, the everything is concentrated, accumulated in cities, and that is a highly risky thing uh, in advanced countries as well, not only in developing countries. We have to revisit that. And also constant review is also mentioned. I think this is a strength of Japan. Japan has suffered many uh, disasters uh, in a long history, and Japan has been reviewing our measures as the population ages, the aged people become more vulnerable to disasters, how best we we can protect these people, and the policies and measures are being constantly reviewed, and the world can learn from Japan's uh, practice like this. And uh, uh, adaptive recovery mentioned by Minister Koizumi, I think this is very much to the point. In the Sendai framework and also within the uh, COVID-19 situation, we often talk about build back better. What is build back better? I think that adaptive recovery is just a synonymous to uh, building back better. We are not trying to restore the status quo. We are not trying to develop more infrastructure. Rather, we have to review how the society lives fundamentally. In the situation of COVID-19, we want to uh, turn crisis into opportunity that is indeed uh, called for in uh, DRR as well. When it comes to a uh, post-recovery uh, disaster recovery, we have to take measures. We have to start reconstruction in peacetime, not only once the uh, disaster occurs. Therefore, uh, adaptive recovery should be promoted throughout the world. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Mizutori offered a comment to the comments made by myself and Minister Takeda, especially Ms. Mizutori focused on the following. This, uh, this was mentioned in her keynote speech earlier, but up until now, this was something that was not mentioned in Japan, the so-called trinity, achieving everything simultaneously. So as I mentioned earlier, Paris, Paris Agreement, uh, the Sendai Framework, and DDRR. These three must be dealt with in a very appropriate manner. And with this in mind, Minister Takeda, as the, as the minister responsible for disaster management, has also incorporated international cooperation in the DRR-related activities. So as the cabinet, the cabinet office has a special division for DRR. Japan is one of the very few advanced countries that has a dedicated organization for DRR. So, Minister Takeda, if you would like to talk about the international cooperation going forward on DRR. Thank you. If you look back on the long-standing history of Japan, we have always been exposed to 
natural disasters, small and large. That is the feature of Japan. So bearing in mind what we experienced along the way in a very natural manner, and also through various trials and errors, Japan's DR technology began to advance along the way. So DR technology based on experience. How can we cascade that to the international community? And also, how can we contribute to enhancing DR capacity on a global scale? What contribution can Japan make? This is something that we have considered to date, and this is something that we need to consider going forward and also share and communicate. In 2015, back in 2015, we had the, we were the host of UN World Conference on Disaster Management, and, and the standard framework was established. Up until now, we have made strong contribution to DRR. And also, last year, various companies and organizations of the public and private sector in DRR came together to communicate the DR technology to Japan, uh, to uh, the international community. A, a liaison committee called JIPAT was established. JIPAT, up until now, has provided various seminars to DOR-related experts uh, outside Japan. Such uh, conferences and workshops are numbered 14, and they're trying to introduce such technology through such workshops. As far as these initiatives are concerned, not only just send a framework, but also, in order, I believe this will contribute to achieving not only send a framework, but also SDG as well as DRR. And so, therefore, we would like to continue to collaborate with uh, the relevant organizations so that Japanese DRR can be communicated to the international community so that they will be able to enhance synergy among the three global agendas. Uh, thank you very much for that. Ms. Mizutori, what are your expectations toward Japan in terms of uh, international cascading of DRR? Yes, thank you very much for that question. As was mentioned earlier by the two ministers, as far as Japan is concerned, from the international perspective, Japan has placed core. Japan is one of the very few countries that have placed the DR international cooperation at the core of its of its international cooperation. As was mentioned by yourself, Minister, the Japanese DR technology needs to be spread wide and far. So DR must be based on data and science. Unless that is the case, their, people will not trace their confidence, place their confidence. So when you consider that, it's important that we spread to the excellent Japanese DR technology. Also, furthermore, up until now, Japan has offered cooperation in the hard measures, such as infrastructure develop, development. So resilient infrastructure in the face of global warming and also uh, resilient infrastructure in the face of uh, natural disasters. Unless you have such resilience, then the, the results of development will be wiped out. So therefore, physical side, uh, the hard side of uh, co cooperation must be realized. On Furthermore, Japan has been, I hope Japan will be active in terms of leading the philosophy. As is evidenced by the Sendai framework, in the DRR countermeasures, there are very various important philosophy, leaving no one behind, uh, saving those who are vulnerable. So the issue of gender must be considered. And also uh, those who are very vulnerable in the face of disasters must be considered. And also Minister Takeda talked about public and private partnership, so PPP, and also coordination with the civil organizations. All stakeholders must come together in realizing DRR. So this leads to both uh, mutual assistance and self-help. We talk about risk is everyone's business. We always talk about how risk is everyone's business. We are all affected by risk. This is indeed the case. And against the backdrop, it's important that the government must play a central role. But at the same time, it's important that all stakeholders come together in coming up with the R in terms of dealing, uh, taking the R measures. And Japan is already progressing on this front. So I hope that in the context of international cooperation, this can be also delivered. So both uh, the soft and hard uh, aspects, there are challenges, but Japan is capable of leading the way. And I hope that climate change and DRR, which is the topic of the day, we hope that in this uh, combined area, Japan can lead the international cooperation. That is my expectation. Well, Ms. Mizutori, as far as uh, this time around, I have been launching the term uh, adaptive recovery. So adaptive recovery. I think it's important that this philosophy needs to be spread on a global scale. And so this philosophy of, of adaptive recovery, in what way 
can we more effectively spread this philosophy? I would appreciate your advice. Well, globally, Build Back Better is a, a very well-established philosophy on a global scale. So let's start from there. And starting from there, what what is entailed when we talk about the building back better? Although there is a lot of discussion about what build back better means, I think there is still room for further discussion. So when you take a look at various examples, it's important that people there are a lot of people who want to restore the status quo because they want to achieve recovery as soon as possible. So that is still the core of this discussion. And that is the requirement on the on the part of many people. If their houses are have collapsed, they want to restore their housing as soon as possible. They want to restore schools as soon as possible. So from the public, the citizens, there are uh, requir requirements. We have to bear that in mind, but at the same time, it is important that the government very carefully work with the civic society and discuss. We should not just seek uh, status quo, restoring status quo, but we should. We have to explain why it is important that we introduce uh, adaptive recovery, because unless that is the case, it will not be a sustainable recovery. This might be a time-consuming exercise, but I, be, I believe COVID-19 has presented such an exa uh, opportunity for us. So in, in each given country, what issues are faced by our society? We need to revisit that, that we have that opportunity now. So leveraging this opportunity, we should consider the substance of adaptive recovery and building back better. It's important that we, we, we it would be effective if we can educate on this front. Thank you very much. So adaptive recovery and, co and the world after COVID-19, I think this is very compatible. Now, Minister Takeda, in the face of uh, the expansion of COVID-19, when natural disasters strike, how should we respond? You are addressing this issue as well. So from the perspective, Minister Takeda, can you talk about what Japan can contribute in the face of pandemic in this international forum? I would appreciate your thoughts. Thank you. The international societies have been changed because of the COVID-19 pandemic, and DRR is no exception. What we are trying to do is at the time of occurrence of a disaster, the affected people have to be protected. We have uh, evacuation centers, and we are trying to improve evacuation centers in advance in which municipalities, how many evacuation centers can be provided. So we list up these uh, evacuation centers in advance before the occurrence of disaster. Now we are facing a COVID-19. The evacuation center has to be clean and safe. However, we have to also provide enough space uh, to each individual. That means that we need more evacuation centers. Based on that, the uh, people who suffer from uh, fever and coughing, uh, they could come to evacuation centers, and also hotels and inns can be utilized. In what way could we utilize these hotels and inns? Uh, what kind of functions could we expect of them? And we have to define them in advance. Particularly, uh, we have to reduce the impact and burden uh, on the part of individuals uh, staying in the evacuation centers. But we have to avoid at all costs that uh, people People will lose uh, lives at the evacuation centers. We are uh, cooperating closely with Japan Red Cross uh, associations and hospitals. And uh, also, I am also in charge of the uh, personnel management. We are trying to introduce a different way of working. And telework or remote working is now spreading in Japan because of the pandemic. And during the disaster, we have to avoid uh, non-essential, non-urgent outings. And also remote work could be a one effective tool uh, that can be used during uh, disaster. But in any case, we have to manage uh, cleanliness and safety of evacuation centers. We have to provide enough space uh, so that the people can lead that life in the uh, secure manner in the evacuation centers. That is a very important point. And through such effort, we would like to contribute to the uh, infectious disease countermeasures as well. Thank you very much. We are running short of time. So Ms. Mizutori, once again, regarding the joint message, and also, although the time was limited, uh, based on the exchanges between the two ministers, including myself, I want to ask Ms. Mizutori to uh, give us a final comment. 
Thank you, Minister Koizumi, Minister Takeda. Well, this is going to be a very lofty、uh, project. Under the COVID-19 situation, UNSG is lamenting most because of the lack of international solidarity and unity. If this is a good situation,、uh, advanced countries have to lead the way to form a solidarity in major way to respond to COVID-19. In 2008, after financial crisis, G20 was formed. However, this time,、uh, we are not seeing a, a emergence of such international、uh, solidarity. The COVID-19 is hitting all the countries in the world. At the same time, as Minister Takeda said, other disasters are occurring in South Asia and the、uh, Pacific Ocean countries. So, against such a backdrop, all the people are affected. However, the impact is different from people to people. The people, a population more vulnerable, are affected more greatly. So, in such a situation, the lack of international solidarity, I hope that the Japanese. Japan would play the a role to improve、uh, this situation. One important topic is、uh, climate change and、uh, DRR and also SDGs. There is no other country s、uh, compared to Japan where population wears this SDG badge. By promoting three global a g e n d a simultaneously, Japan can、uh, take. The lead in this process. I hope that、uh, two ministers, together with the、uh, government as a whole, by 2030, the, we hope that we'll be able to achieve、uh, international frameworks, including SDGs, that we adopted in 2015 by 2030. For that purpose, United Nations Secretariat will work、uh, very hard. However, members have to、uh, play a greater role. Members have to、uh, take the lead. Thank you very much. From Ms. Ms. Zutori,、uh, she talks,、uh, talked about the lack of international、uh, solidarity lamented by Secretary General Guterres. So, climate change and DRR and also recovery from the COVID 19,、uh, they have to be、uh, achieved simultaneously. For that, international solidarity is essential. That is why I propose, in cooperation with the United Nations, in September, there will be a ministerial meeting uh, for uh, climate change and also、uh, recovery from COVID 19. The online platform will be、uh, held. Uh, in September. We want to use such an opportunity to increase、uh, solidarity in the world, and Japan is going to take the lead as much as possible, wherever possible. Once again, thank you for your time, Minister Takeda, Ms. Mizutori. With that, I would like to conclude the open dialogue. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'd like to thank all the panelists. With this, we'd like to conclude the program. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This is the end of the program.